Welcome to Red Dirt d and I'm Michael Cross, and I play Gideon Block, a paladin with a tragic past, along with Kiri Hester as Poppy Tealeaf, a halfling druid searching for a new life, Johnny Payne as Zonimus Denon, a half-elf rogue with a past he can't seem to escape, Brooke Bullock as Macron Stoneshaper, a young dwarf sorcerer setting out to discover his own arcane gifts, and Ash King as our dungeon master. Join us now for Tales from the Caliban Frontier. The hardest thing about any journey is getting started. Fortunately, Jacoby Blackhands of the Blackhands Rail Company has made the path forward clear and easy. The Black Hands Rail Line is the crowning jewel of its titular clan, a modern marvel of dwarven engineering. The nine o'clock train out of Venturis left right on schedule, one of the promises that the company makes to its patrons. And the several day journey to the last stop began. We find our heroes on the train where they have been traveling for a few days. If all goes according to schedule, they should be in the last stop by late this afternoon. Once they arrive, they will have to start their task, mapping the Kalban frontier. What have you all been doing the past few days as you've been stuck on this train heading to your destination? I have my one book that I found. Um, is a book of animals, and I have sidled up to Gideon, and I'm making him point to all of the animals that we get to meet on our journey, and he's giving me, probably begrudgingly, it was cute the first five minutes, but six hours in um, can become a little tedious. Right, that's a cow. Okay, that's a duck. We have a few ducks there, but mostly it's cows and chickens and aurochs. We have a lot of those around. But I'm just so excited if, to meet all of them. I'm, I'm glad you're allowed to go, but you know, you're, they're going to be all over the place. You're going to have to look at all of these animals. Wonderful. Now, uh, these ones on this page do not seem as gentile as the cows and quote unquote chickens, but uh, I, I just need you to fill me in. Which of these are most likely to eat? And what ones are you pointing to? Um, there's probably a page with just some run of the mill like coyotes and wolves and um, some of the more, for lack of a better term, mythological um, creatures that Poppy living in the city would not have had access to. Um, she would only have heard them in scary stories and those kinds of things. And maybe she's looking for a little bit of a scary story because we've been on this train for four days and Zonimus won't tell her good stories. Well, well I'll tell you, the, the coyotes and wolves, uh, you certainly have to watch out for, but they are mostly, they hunt in packs. You find a lone coyote, they're most likely to run away from you, even as small as you are. But if you see them in packs, you gotta run. You gotta be real careful, because they will take you down. Some of the things out there are dangerous, like the rattlers. You know what a rattler is, right? I don't think we've gotten to that page yet. Oh, uh, well. Maybe we should take a look at the snakes, because snakes are dangerous. And I'm just going to flip through, and we're going to continue looking and, at these snakes. And a lot of these times, you're talking about poisons. So we got to take care, got to take care of the poison if you ever run into that. So you got to be careful. Well, every time I try and tell Poppy over there stories, she thinks it's a lie, and I made it up, and it ain't true, which might be true. So I'm going to go talk to Mac, and... Uh, I don't know if he's has experience with playing cards. Yeah. So, Macron has been spending, you know, a lot of times with his face just plastered to the window pane, watching things go by. It's just you can tell he's just super excited to be out and and seeing things and nature and the and just away from the big city, like this the idea of the this openness and all the possibility to make your own choices. It's just it's just bubbling up in his eyes, just excitement and, and interest and stuff. Uh, but definitely, if, uh, if, uh, if he's asked to, to play a card game, he knows a few, and so he'd, he'd love to spend the time 
uh, playing cards and in the back of his head, you know, there's that little interplay that he saw between Gideon and, and Zonimus about, uh, you know, asset acquisition and, redis and re, uh, redistributing redistributive qualities there. Mm -hmm. So so that kind of plays in the back of his mind a little bit about, uh, and gosh, do we have like a real life criminal, you know, kind of thing going on or, or what is that? So You stuck to that window and I came in looking at a whole lot of nothing. It's, it's just all so open out here. Have you have you noticed? Yeah. Like, look at that. Look at that. You could go. You could go anywhere. Like that. 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 Well, they just went by. That. The trees that are right back over there. That grove. You know, it's it's amazing, Sonomus. Have you been out in a you place like this? You are as excited as a bear with a honeycomb. I tell you. <laughs> that's that's good. Well, you know, I mean, it's just it's just been so great. What's that you got in your hand? You play. I'll start shuffling through my deck of cards, flipping them around each other. Well, uh, some, you know. Uh, we, we, you ever play, uh, you ever play stones? Yeah, I've played stones once or twice. Yeah, uh, that more of a dwarven thing than cards, than cards is, but, but yeah, I've, I've played cards a little bit. What's your game? Uh, sometimes we play, uh, Five Eyed Miner, and occasionally, um, you know, we'd, uh, uh, what's that one human game? The one that they, they use all the betting, and then someone usually gets shot or stabbed. Well, that's poker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That always strikes me as a little bit inappropriate name, but that's okay. Are you gonna shoot me or stab me if we play? Uh, no. Can I trust you? Well, uh, sure. All right. Well, I'll start dealing out. Buckner's and... really thinking about that question. He was just like, you know, you kind of see the confusion on his face. Like, why? Why would anyone like not be honest? You know. <laughs> Throughout however many hands we play, I win none of them. Okay. And in doing so, I win everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but say you guys, you guys play a couple hands. Um, there's other passengers on the train who kind of are, some of them are there for business, some of them are there for pleasure. The, the crowd has kind of shifted and changed over the past few days as you've gone through the cities of Shag and Zeisen. So again, you know, just a, just a mix of mix of people as you've been going along. Some of them kind of stop and, you know, maybe ask if they can kind of get in on your game just to kind of kill some time a little bit. Because several days, it's a long journey but the mood on the train is fairly casual. Again, most people are, if it's not business, it's pleasure. Because this train, in addition to passengers, also carries a large number of goods that are destined for the last stop. The town itself, you get the feeling from talking to the other passengers that it's a staging area for a lot of caravans that head out into the desert because in the Kalban frontier, there are a small handful of larger settlements that have grown up around these railway stops on the Dwarven line. Used to, Shag was just a orcish camp that during the winter, it was in a more favorable climate. So the orcs would bring their cattle there to winter over. But then it started to become a railway stop as the East found out about how delicious Arak meat was. So the orcs began to export the, the cattle. So it developed into a actual city as opposed to just this small orc encampment. Zeisen, much the same way. It's called a pass-through city because while it does support the rail line, it just has kind of some minor farmers and it's not very eventful. Nothing, nothing much to speak there, but whenever the trains come through, they bring new people and new goods that filter out through the community. The last stop is the largest on this particular line, specifically because, again, it literally is the last stop. Once here, goods are loaded onto wagon train caravans that are taken to the smaller communities and settlements that had sprung out around watering holes. So there's a, there's a lot of people here on this train that that's what they do, is they are the purveyors of these goods and the managers and workers of these caravan trains who are coming from the east where they have bought up goods and are escorting them out 
into the frontier. So it's, you know, you're, you're not the only ones on this journey. There's quite a number of people. We're coming to the end of the book and I say, okay, now, uh, Poppy, zebras, you won't see zebras in the frontier. But if that, hopefully that answers all your questions about all these animals we've now gone through in this book. Remember, bears are bad. Keep away from the bears. You see a black one or a brown one, run. But listen, if I just really think if I could be their friend, then I would have a cuddly bear. It would keep me warm. We could be best friends. I could, you know, hitch a ride. I feel like it'd be just, just a, so much fun. I can't even think of something to say about it. Well, if you can find a bear that'll be your friend, yes. uh, I would uh, I would be all for that because uh, they are strong and, and, and mighty creatures. I just wouldn't get anywhere near one of them and if I were you. I just, I'm just saying. Okay, I, I won't approach any bears and I hastily add to my to-do list, be friends, <laughs> large bear. As you're writing, Poppy, the gentle motion of the train that has been a constant companion for the last few days suddenly begins to slow. At first, barely even registers. This has happened a few times before. Once, while between the cities of Shag and Zeisen, a herd of Aurochs were being driven over a section of the track that caused a delay until the orc tribesmen driving them got them back in order. The other passengers start to look out of the windows very curiously. They want to see what has stopped their journey this time. Before anyone can fully register what has caused the stop, the door to your car suddenly flies open. Expecting to see one of the staff, all eyes are instead drawn to the three foot tall figures standing in the doorway with large, sharp tooth grins and cobbled together gear. One of them brandishes a large burlap potato sack and barks out an order. Not all the shiny you guts in the sack and nobody's gotta get hurt. By the forge, it's goblins. Have we got our weapons with us? Yes. Uh, I stand up and I say, uh, Excuse me, uh, what are y'all doing here? This is what they call a stick up. Not on my watch. You want to wrestle? And I reach and pull my duster <coughs> over the side of my revolver. And I say, if we're going to wrestle, it's going to be this way. And I put my fingertips in from them Ooh. against the peril handle of my revolver. Ooh. Him's got, him's got boomstick shiny. So get off the train and there'll be no trouble. Do I make myself clear? Give me an intimidation check. While this speech is going on, I'm going to look over at Matt and... Just kind of like flash the whole, spread the whole deck of cards out and flash them at him. Put them back up and slip them under the table and give them a wink. 23. 23? Ooh, okay. Nicely done. <laughs> I have to remember that. Okay, so these three goblins who have stepped onto the train, you know, you've got the one with his large kind of potato sack that he's kind of shaking at some of the other passengers, and a few of them have kind of started to comply with the goblins' demands. Uh, you, on the other hand, cause all their eyes to turn to you, and then they start looking at one another. I don't think you want to wrestle with him. He's, he's like the silver ones. Look, we got some. Let's, let's go. <laughs> they kind of start to cower back from you. Before you go, you're going to give all that stuff back, right? Goblin looks at you, looks at the sack, looks back at you, closes the sack, tosses it over his shoulder. Book it, boys! <laughs> <laughs> and they... Nice start to scramble out the door. Okay, I'm gonna try and grab a, a one with a bag if I can. Okay, we'll basically use the rules for grapple. Yes. So give me either oh, no. athletics or acrobatics and our little goblin is going to resist with his... Uh, yep, that's a natural one. Natural oh, one. No. I dove for it, I really <laughs> wanted to get to it. <laughs> Yeah, you were you were diving because you were you know you saw you know it was some like some jewelry you know maybe some sentimental items so you really wanted to make sure those got back to the people and so you dove but you just landed flat and so you're you're prone on the ground as these three goblins just book it out of the car. If you guys would like to pursue, I think this is a good time to roll initiative. <laughs> that is going to spray the cards all. in their face and distract them. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. But what am I going to do? <laughs> My dice say that Macron is obviously still trying to figure out what's <laughs> synonymous meant with the cards, so. <laughs> I 
you'll like see, you'll see one day. Like we're playing. He's trying to tell me we're, something. We're I know it. Later, like is it? <laughs> I did not. To tell I did me not something. talk appropriate spells for <laughs> this today. Someone, someone picked all of the flavor spells and none of the. Uh... <laughs> well, I always have one spell slot taken by creator destroy water because i feel like that's very important just a little bit i'm just gonna always keep that one <laughs> i think that's an excellent creator destroy water ought to be in there every single Green day craft versus goblin gang <laughs> <laughs> i right. think you should do shillelagh on your book <laughs> whoa that's uh, outstanding four four is ominous <laughs> gideon 19 modified 11 for my crime. Okay, and Poppy. 18. 18, okay. What is your dex modifier, Poppy? Um, it's a great question. I believe it is not a uh, large. Uh, I mean, that would be fitting because you are small. Actually, it is. It's plus three. <laughs> plus three, okay. Mm. So you actually get to go before the goblins do. Ooh. Howdy, friends. Michael Cross here, taking just a few moments away from Red Dirt D&D, asking you to become a patron of this podcast. Your support means we can add a lot of extra niceties to the show in the form of artwork and music, as well as supporting our cast and crew. Patrons get early access to content as well as bonus material, along with access to our Discord server. You can even get an invite to monthly Q&A sessions and DM classes, maybe even a two-hour game session with our very own Dungeon Master, Ash King. We have six different monthly levels to choose, ranging from $5 to $100. Head over to patreon.com slash reddirtdnd right now to show your support for this new podcast. Now, back to Tales from the Caliban Frontier. Again, kind of the scene before you guys, you know, started off just a normal day, you know, uh, you know we're, we're a couple hours away from our destination and all of a sudden... These goblins are on our train demanding shinies. So Gideon is kind of, he's on the floor, you know, having attempted to stop them, but they are, they are basically kind of at the door of the train now about to jump off and, you know, run out. So uh, Poppy, you kind of get, get yourself together the quickest because you were, you were with Gideon. So you, you saw him, you know, trying to make sense of everything. What are you going to do? Oh, I got to go first. Okay. Would it be possible? For me to get within 10 feet of them. Yeah, it's not difficult. The train is completely still, so you just have to run up there. Okay, I'm going to cast Earth Trevor and try to make them all fall down. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, is so that, that a... is a DC 12 dex. Dex save? Okay. Mm -hmm. So there are three of them. All right, that is going to be... One will save with a 12. One will fail with a eight and the last one will succeed anybody that fell down takes six six bludgeoning okay and are knocked prone okay and six would be the full damage yes okay so you do manage to knock one of them completely like completely out so he falls down as the you know this train car begins to rumble and it's you know the passengers themselves are having to like hold on to the seats that have been bolted to the floor in attempt to you know avoid being tossed to the ground this is what i feel like that looks like so gideon fell down i need i'm gonna don't worry gideon i'm gonna help and i just Drop to the ground myself, and you're not clear how this is helping at all. <laughs> and then the car kind of shakes a little bit. Look, he didn't trip. He fell down from the train car shaking. And then the goblins fall down, too. So yeah, one of them, again, he, he falls down and bonk, bonks his head, so he is completely passed out. The other two, the one with the potato sack and one of his buddies, were the two that managed to, to keep their feeding. So sure-footed little mountain goats, they look back at their buddy who's passed out and then look at the door. The one who does not have the potato sack, so he's got his hands free. He actually goes and grabs his buddy, his unconscious buddy, under the arms and is... <laughs> <laughs> trying to drag him out the door as the one with the potato sack is just going to take his action to dash and he is going to again jump out of the door start trying to book it and looking out the windows you do kind of see that 
there appears to be some wolves that are just kind of hanging around. Um, and he's, this goblin is running for those wolves. He hasn't made it to them just quite yet. And his other buddy, again, can only move at half speed because he is dragging, you know, their, their friend, but he does move out of the actual train itself. So they are trying to get out and that will be their turn. And that will bring us to Gideon. Well, I was 19. You were 19. Um, I'm going to go that, ahead and let that you... that was my move if you wanted to do that. Yeah, but say the, the falling the prone. Yeah, okay, so, we'll take that because yeah. I did just that's, that's that, what I, think. I do apologize. Okay, so that will bring us to Mokrin. Uh So Mokrin sees this happening. Quick question. The rail car windows, are they down or and or can they be lowered? Some are down because, you know, some people are like, I need the fresh air. <laughs> yep. So they can be lowered. But yes, you can find an open window very easily. Okay, so he stands up uh, kind of in the seat of the booth of the car where mm-hmm. where he and Zonimus were, were standing and yanks down a window real quick, like flips the latches, you hear the click, and then just like throws that down, pulls a throwing hammer off of the ring, out of the ring at his belt, and then flings it kind of horizontally outside of the window at the one that's running with the sack. Okay, go ahead and give me an attack roll. A five, okay. uh, mod- modified for a ten. So. Okay. Duh. Yeah. So it's kind of an awkward angle because the windows, yeah, they open, yes. but they don't open a lot. Right. You know, it's like it's like on the bus, like half the window, you pull it down, but there's still that other half that still prevents you from falling out. So you try to get this get this throw in, but the angle is just, it's so weird and just goes end over end, just kind of right down into the grass of the prairie. <laughs> As this goblin looks up and is just like, (laughs) sticks his tongue out at you as he's still going for the wolves. All right. It's ominous. Huh. I will stand up, take a long look at Gideon. (laughs) Long look at Poppy. Gives you a wave from the floor. Yes, I just uh, salute from the floor. I will (laughs) reach down to my side, pull out my gun. Join Mac at the window. Get him, Pa! And hesitate for a while. (laughs) While I contemplate, is it on me to stop him? (laughs) Is this my responsibility? And I'll fire. 20? Dirty 20? Dirty 20? Oh! Are you intentionally trying to kill him? I'm aiming low. You aiming low to Mm. kind of. Okay. Yeah, you shoot. And you do hit, and you hear you hear a yelp. Go ahead and give me your damage. Five. Five. Okay. Yeah, he's crippled in the knee, so he will only be able to hobble away at half speed now. Okay. I'm gonna pull my arm back through the window with it halfway still kind of extended at the ready. Okay. I'm gonna turn across the car with it pointing in any willy nilly direction. When the sight falls on Gideon. I'll twirl it back into his holster, take a step forward and extend my hand and help him up. Okay. And I just look at you brokenhearted from the floor that my own father <laughs> didn't help me up. <laughs> what about me, Paul? <laughs> All right. Back to the top of the round, the, Gideon. I'll take <laughs> the red hat had fallen off. He didn't recognize you. <laughs> I take Zonimus' hand and I pull myself up. So how far away now are is the, the two one that's dragging the other one? Like I said, they didn't get they they didn't get too far out of the train. If you dash, you can reach them. I think I'm going to do what well, no, I'm just actually going to chase after them okay. and pull my revolver and fire. Okay. I'm guessing he's facing me cuz he's pulling this guy back. Yeah, but say he's like you pull out, you pull out your revolver, and the goblin's eyes just kind of go wide as you know he's got he's got his buddy, and he's looking very concerned. Uh, that would be a natural twenty. Oh, whoop, whoop. oh. where are you aiming? Two d six. That's right at his chest because I right. can't really blow down. Right center mass. Yeah. Okay. That would be thirteen points of damage. Oh no, it wouldn't be. It would be sixteen points of damage. Sixteen total. Okay. Yeah, that. That is an insta kill. That's the next goblin. Yeah. As you fire off this shot and it hits center mass, he drops like a stone and you see the bloom of the blood through the little shirt that he was wearing. And I smoke it. All right. Poppy. I am very impressed by the marksmanship of my two fellows. So I'm actually 
going to uh, spend this round giving Zonimus the help action because I have nothing I can do with any kind of range. <laughs> Okay. So I'm just gonna look at you with tears in my eyes because I'm still on the floor and I'm gonna stand up. You didn't help me, but I could help you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my turn. <laughs> All right. Well. Well. All right. We so get our this little girl drinking. <laughs> our little goblin friends. Um, you see the one who's got the potato sack because it looks back and just, again, the eyes go absolutely wide as he sees one of his buddies just get blasted away. And he looks back at you, just this snarl. And, you know, the whole, you know, you, you shot my buddy. He is going to pull out a little revolver, kind of, you know, it's Cute. been cobbled together, you know, very kind of rusty and not really well catered for, but he is going to attempt to get some revenge. That'll be a 21. Oof. A twin. Ding. Oh. Oof. That'll be 11. That hurt. I am down to my last... Oh, let's call it a hit point, shall we? <laughs> down, down to your last chip. Yes. <laughs> and I'm mad. Well, he is too. My other ball. <laughs> yeah, I think that one right, went right into the gut and actually got me down to my knees. And mm. so I am just barely holding on. Yeah, so he, yeah, he just kind of <coughs> kind of looks at you because he doesn't look, again, he doesn't look much better. His, his kneecap just got taken out, but he's just... <sighs> <sighs> and that will bring us to Makran. So the, the goblin that just returned fire, he's probably within 60 feet, maybe 40 feet away, something like that? Yeah. Okay, awesome. So Mokrin, uh kind of touches a, a, a pouch in his vest and then starts to mumble some things underneath his breath and you start to see like this kind of greenish mist start to swirl around one hand and he extends it out the window and casts acid spray. Okay. So that goblin needs to save versus dex for half damage. Okay. It'll be a night. Actually, I'm going to give him disadvantage because he's he's been shot in the kneecap. Mm. Oh, even with disadvantage, he succeeds. That's okay. Six points of damage is the roll. So. Okay, so he would take three. Yes. Which is enough to actually uh, bring him down. So you, this acid gets splashed kind of a little bit up on the face and kind of down. It's just, because <laughs> it bubbles just a little bit. It's very... Very disconcerting, but he uh, he drops the sack and kind of just drops to his knees, holding his face in agony. And then he moves toward the front, of, leaving the window. He moves toward the front of the of the rail car, kind of toward the door where the unconscious goblin and the the one with the big hole in his chest. Might well, be they like. are they're actually out. Oh, on they made it out. Okay, yeah. so I'll just move forward like toward the door then. Yes. Okay, that's fine. Awesome. All right. So that will bring us to Zominus. I will extend my hand to Poppy and help her up. <laughs> and I will point to Gideon and say, do you have something to do now? I gotta save my paw. You gotta save your, I'm shaking my head at her <laughs> in total disbelief. I could actually do this from a distance, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go over to Gideon and just put my tiny little baby hand up on his shoulder because he said he was on his knees so I could reach. And um, you're going to get a whopping four because <laughs> I only cast Healing Word. I only stocked that one today. Which is fine. <laughs> that is enough to get me off my feet. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all I can do. <sighs> and Thank you. I'm also expecting that you probably, you know, back in Venturis, did purchase some other healing supplies mm -hmm. because you were given 125 gold each by Jacoby as your supply fund. So you can... All the standard kits. So healer, yeah. Healer's kit, first yeah, aid kit. Yeah, healer's kit, first aid kit, or, you know, if you want to have, you want to have a couple of potions, you know, you, you knew where you were going. I, uh, I, first off, kind of shocked, like, oh, thank you, Poppy. That was, I didn't know you could do that. I'm not sure the extent of my abilities either, but I just feel a connection to, you know, she who weeps and the, the, the world and the nature. Um, just being out of the city, I feel revived. Well, I'm going to keep you close by. 
Ugh. So I go over and I grab the sack. I look down at the dead goblin and I say, now don't do it again. And I walk away and I take the other, uh, if anyone wants to tie up that other goblin. Yeah, but you, so you turn... have one goblin who's just completely unconscious, right. so. When you turn to walk away from the corpse and come back, I'm standing behind you, like in your way, stopping. Big grin on my face. But Gideon, they didn't know we had a killer in our group. So nice do, shooting. I do what I have to do. Thank you. That sometimes goes with the job. I don't shoot to wound. Well, I won't shoot to wound in front of you anymore. So I, I hand uh, the sack over to, I'm guessing, some kind of a conductor, somebody who's... Well, in order to find... That's the thing. You don't see any, basically, of the train staff currently. You know, the goblins very, very suddenly burst in. And again, the train itself is at a complete standstill. So you're not sure exactly where the uh, the employees of the rail line are at this current point in time. But you can hand, you can, like, open up the sack and hand, you know, the valuables. You know, people are very, it's very easy for them to identify, like, what was theirs. Because right. most of the things that people were giving up, because um, the goblins just ask for shine. So anything that had some sort of a shine to it, like you think some of these pieces might not even really be valuable, but they're pretty. So the goblins were, you, know, you give me that, and you give me that too. But yeah, so it's very easy to kind of pass things back out and, you know, make sure, you know, one woman just kind of, you know, takes the locket and just thank you so much. Uh, uh, you're welcome. I'm kind of wondering, we haven't seen the train move. Should we go up to the engine room, find out what's going on, go up to the engine cart? You see another passenger who looks to be a little more, a little more seasoned to the point where like when the goblin had like thrust the sack into his face, he just immediately like without question put in just basically a couple of minor baubles. Um, he just looks at you and says, well, in my experience, when there's one little group like this, there's probably a couple more up along the way. You might want to do a thorough investigation further up the line, and chances are probably good that they've put something on the tracks mm. to keep us from moving for a short time. This happens fairly regularly. So let's start moving toward the front of the cat, front of the train. Well, I will. I don't know if you guys want to, but uh, I gotta go see what's wrong with the with the train. Uh, whilst I'm going down, I am going to shoot down a healing potion. Okay. Matt, when I look at you, do I see anything hanging off your person? Do you have more of those hammers? You got a gun belt with rounds. Yeah, so 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 Macron, um, it's kind of hard to to figure out maybe maybe just by appearance because he's got a backpack and then on top of that backpack is a shield and over one shoulder is a war hammer. When he's out moving now here, those things are probably sitting on the seat mm -hmm. next to us in the booth or whatever of the of the train. But at his on each hip, he has a throwing hammer and um, Zonimus is pretty attentive. He's probably also noticed that there's. Uh, a dagger in each boot of, of Macron's as well. So he's dressed, I mean, he's ready for trouble if uh, if we need to out here, you know. Okay. I'm saying you are down one axe right now. Yes. Until you retreat it. Yes, so. and go Well, ahead. that's where I'm going. I'm, did we see where it went? Is, is it there? Is it obvious where it is? I mean, you can kind of like, it maybe takes a minute or two of actual searching because it's, it's prairie grass, so it's tall, but... I was going to help him look for it or go get it for him to give okay. him a once over. Yeah, I'm going to say you look can... Look at him pretty, check him out pretty good while he's looking for it or check him out pretty good when he's, when I'm giving it to him. Yeah. Maybe when you're first doing that, you know, Macron might have been uh, binding the one goblin that's unconscious. Sure. And pretty ceremoniously tossing the dead one just out of the door okay. and then dragging the other one out, you know, not violently, but definitely not gently. You know, his heels are probably clink, 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 clink. Little, on little that unconscious breeze. goblin. Yeah, yeah. Head lolling. Yeah, exactly. So then kind of, you know, just kind of tossing him on the ground. He looks up and, and he sees maybe you found it. Maybe you're looking for it. It's either way. So. Um, I'm going to kneel down beside him while he's wrapping the goblin. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna present his hammer. Okay. And I'm going to tell him it you know, might not be easy to replace something like this this far out here. Doing a good job on this goblin, and I'm gonna slide a hand, a dagger in his boot out of it. Oh, out of Mokrin's boot? Mm -hmm. Okay. Give me, Zominus, give me a slide of hand. Mokrin, give me perception. All right. Uh, natural 19. Okay. <laughs> 
14. So, <laughs> so close. I'm like, uh, yeah, but see, you feel something as you're as you're binding the goblin. You, you feel this brush against the side of your leg. And uh, so, so Mokrin, you know, looks down and then and then sees your hand kind of lingering mm-hmm. there, maybe by the hilt of his dagger or whatever. And he he looks up, just a little confused, uh, but and 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 says, uh, "Did you did you need to borrow something?" No, I uh, start packing it down. Put like these these two, these either. You can't you can't replace these out here in the middle of nowhere. They're probably like finely worked with the stamp of Makran's clan mm. into into the hilt. I'm going to well, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna catch up to Gideon and pull on his sleeve. Yes, Poppy. What is it? The wolves cannot be their friend. <laughs> oh God, I forgot about the wolves. Uh, did the wolves? I, I was wondering, did they run off or did they stay where they were? Looking out the window, you kind of see where. Um, their ears have kind of twitched forward, but as soon as the actual, like, the gunshots fired, um, especially when you fired and when Zominus fired, um, these three wolves who seem to have been waiting actually do take off running into the prairie. Okay, so I can't be their friend. They ran away, but did you see them? They were beautiful. They were, they are gorgeous creatures. I admit they are very beautiful. And as soon as we find you a puppy dog, we will make sure he is your friend. I add to my list. <laughs> find puppy dog. Put it back in my pocket. And I'm going to go with you to go see what's at the in front of the train. Yeah. Okay. And as I go, I holster my weapon. And uh, I've still got my rapier on my side and my shield, so... Okay. All right, Makran and Zamas, are you guys headed that way too, or hanging back? How did Gideon and and Poppy? Did you? He was leaking when you ran out of here. And you would just see us walking along the tracks for the front of the train, Gideon looking super badass, and me just waddling behind him with one hand on the end of his duster. <laughs> Let's get out there. Trying to keep up. <laughs> Yeah, let's gather before Look, he she's kills got anybody legs. else. I have short legs. So, uh, you know, if Zonimus shares that they went went out that mm-hmm. way, you know, and we've drug him out there, maybe we see them. I don't know if they went through, like, the connective cart doors, or did you guys? We you guys were outside. We, we, we went, went outside yeah. and, and along uh, alongside, alongside the tracks. Yeah, so if Macron looks up and sees them, you know, kind of walking, mm-hmm. walking, that, walking that way, he says, uh, I figure we better go on down there and see if they got the situation under control. Yep, I agree. And then he kind of looks for a long minute like he's waiting for you to go first. And then oh. his eyes kind of dodge back and forth as if Zonimus is staring at him. He can't hold Zonimus' stare. He's kind of like, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, I'll smirk a little bit and push my hat up in a revealing way and uh, turn on my heels and walk out whistling. Following along. So... You begin to walk down the length of the train. The sun is bright overhead, beating down. And as you continue to walk, you see the cars ahead. Some of the passenger cars have had their doors flung open. You assume that the goblins have probably already been this way. A few cars ahead is one of the one of the cars that has the goods, food, water, maybe some weapons. The door of this large cattle car has been flung open. The path ahead is clear. Red Dirt D&D is Ash King as our Dungeon Master, Brooke Bullock as Macron Stone Shaper, Johnny Payne as Zonimus Dinar, Kiri Hester as Poppy Tealy, and I'm Michael Cross as Gideon Block. Our sound producer is Mark Coffrin. Our theme music was created by the cinemagician P.J. Castillo. Our incidental music comes from Jeffrey McBride. And our sound effects courtesy of TabletopAudio.com. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and our new home on the interwebs, RedDirtDnd.com. We here at Red Dirt D&D could really use your help in getting the word out about us. If you like what you've heard, make sure and subscribe, rate us, and leave a comment. Also, tell your friends about Red Dirt D&D. You can also support the show at patreon.com slash reddirtdnd. We have several giving levels to help us grow up big and strong. And finally, a special thank you to KOSU for giving us a platform to do what we love so much. Join us next time as we go deeper into the Calban frontier. Dirt 
D&D by joining our Patreon. Go over to patreon.com slash reddirtdnd in order to learn more information about that. You can also give us a review and a rating on Apple Podcasts. We do love reading those. You can listen to Red Dirt D&D anywhere you listen to your other podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, NPR, and more. Follow us on social media for information about new episodes, live streams, and other events that we may be attending near you. And finally, you can follow us on social media on Facebook and on Twitter, Red Dirt d and And remember, don't approach a bull from the front, a horse from the rear, or a fool from any direction.